All right, so um, as we're building up this map, the next thing I want to do is not only get the density of points, but also um, use the squares to average the price uh, in those areas. And this is really useful as well because you know if we have all the data and we visualize all the prices of every point, um, we might have situations where points are overlapping, and you might have like a really high priced point overlapping a low price point, and it might give you the impression that that whole area is really high priced. Uh, whereas if we average those two points, we might say that in general in this area, um, the prices are, are pretty even. Okay, so to do that, we can use the grid now to actually uh, average or take statistics off of the values of the points inside the grid. All right, so the tool for doing that is a data management tool. And there is a tool called Join Attributes by Location. So what this does is it takes a certain shape as a location, so in this case our grid, and it will take uh, all the data from another feature and join that data based on proximity to that uh, shape. And here we're using grids, uh, but you can do this with any shape file. So for instance, if you had a map of uh, zip codes or census tracts, you can use those shapes as well. Uh, average all the values of all the points that fall within that shape. Okay. So before we do that, one important step is to actually uh, limit the amount of data that we're going to use for the join. So in our case, we want to do the join based on information contained in this SOFON points layer. Um, and by default, that tool will just take every column and try to average all the data in every column. So it's going to try to average the latitudes and longitudes and even the text names. Um, and what we want to do is we actually want to limit that information by deleting all the columns that contain data that we're not interested in averaging. We do this for two reasons. One is speed. Um, it takes a while for it to do all the calculations, so if we limit only to the things we're interested in, it's going to make the process run much faster. And the second reason we do that is if we have text data, it's going to try to average it, and because it can't really find the average of two pieces of text, it's going to give you an error. So you definitely want to make sure to delete any text data in here. Okay. Um, so typically, you probably want to create a copy of this shapefile to do this deletion because you might want to store a version of this point file with all this data. In my case, for the demo, I don't really care. All I want is just this price. Okay, so I'm going to toggle edit mode. I'm going to go to delete uh, attributes. And I'm just going to select every column except for the price num, which is what I'm interested in. Hit OK and toggle save. So once it's finished saving, you can see that our point file now only contains the prices in each point. And we have this grid with squares only where the points are. And limiting both of those, both uh, getting rid of squares that have no points and getting rid of all the other data in the points will significantly speed up this process. And I did all of this pre-processing because I know that um, this tool, the join tool, actually takes a long time if you have too much data. So we want to... Uh, minimize that as much as possible. So once we have those layers uh, ready, we can go to Vector Data Management Tool, Join Attributes by Location. I'll give you another uh, pop-up dialog box. So in this case, our target vector layer is going to be our grid count layer. And our join vector layer, this is the layer that has the attributes that we want to join, we want to average, right? So in this case, it's going to be our points. And we're going to use our SOFON points called projected layer. And now there's a few different ways that this join can work. Uh, the default option is each square will just take the first point it finds and take the attributes from that point. We want to select the second option, which is the summary or statistics of all the features in each cell. And here I'll give you a, a number of options for what statistics to take. Uh, the one we want is mean, the average. You can also do median, which might be more appropriate in some cases. Uh, minimum, maximum value. Okay, You can do any number of these statistics. And then finally, like always, we want to specify a new output shapefile. And we're going to do grid, count, and then add on price. Click OK. And then here, uh, keep all records. I'm not sure what this does, but this keep all records usually works pretty well.
So hit OK. Uh, it's going to give you this warning again because we know we're in the same projected system. Uh, we don't have to worry about it. Hit OK. And see it's run pretty fast because we've really limited the amount of data that, uh, that it's looking at. And here I'm going to say yes, add it to the table of contents. Okay, so close that dialog box, and just like before, we need to go in and specify that we actually created it not in a D, uh, not in a WGS eighty four system, but in the World Mercator projection system. And hit apply. So here's our new grid. It's the same as before. It's not visualized the same way yet. Uh, but if we go to Open Attribute Table, you can see that our point count is here. But now it also has this category of mean price which is what we wanted. And it has another count. Um, basically, the join uh, attributes tool also does its own count. And we could have done this right away to get our density counts, but getting those earlier with the other tool actually allowed us to limit the number of squares and made the whole thing much faster. So now we have these duplicated count uh, fields. All right, so now we have this grid with all the data that we want. Um, and we're ready to visualize it. And to do the visualization, if you remember the map, what I want to do is use one data, the price, to do the color, and the other data, the count, to specify the size of the circle. And if we have the grid, you know, we can change the colors, but you can change the size of every piece. So to do that particular visualization, we're actually going to uh, convert the polygon data back to a point data. Okay, so you see with this example, this kind of workflow of going from points and then using a polygon file to average certain data among those points and then going back to a point file for visualization. Okay, so it's not the only way things are done, but it's a good example of using these different tools. All right, so once we have uh, this grid, we can convert it to a point file by going to vector geometry tools polygon centroids and what this tool will do is it'll take all the shapes in a polygon file and then create a new point file uh, that has a point at the center of every shape okay so for our input polygon vector layer we're going to use our grid comp price and we're going to specify a new shape file and we're going to call it grid count price points. Okay, hit save, add result to canvas, and click OK. Uh, we need to specify the Mercator system. And now you see that it's placed a point at the center of every uh, square, but it but the important part is it not only created that geometry, if we go to the attribute table, it's also carried through all of our data. Okay, 